today is one of those days that I just want to do something, but it's kind of taking me that extra push to get it there. I have my family at home. Everyone's home now for the next three weeks or perhaps even longer. So it's complicated to set up my usual. I have now my own little private area. It's very tight, but it's a, it's a place where I feel like I can perhaps be more productive due to the fact that I'm all to myself here. I've been working on a video to compare NLog and ProRes RAW yet again. But this time around, I'm doing it the right way and the proper way. And perhaps it's going to help you guys achieve that look that you're after a lot easier. In 8-bit, the skin tones are quite pleasing. And uh, in ProRes RAW, it was good, but I had to put a lot of work into it and it would never be as good as I would like it to be. I'm actually doing some color grading in, uh, in Final Cut and then taking that afterwards to finalize the, the actual white balance of the look that I'm trying to achieve and also push my darks and whatnot. So acquiring that white balance uh, in camera first perhaps is the best thing for you to do, especially when you're using NLog and ProRes RAW. So when I take ProRes RAW to Premiere now, what I do is I just increase the blacks and lower the shadows. And that tends to work for me due to the fact that ProRes RAW is kind of noisy. It has the most detail in the blacks than analog, but it doesn't go as deep and rich. So you don't want to bring the highlights too far down because otherwise you start getting, getting some weird artifact in the white, kind of cloudy, uh, muddy look. And uh, so you want to keep it at a level that's decent or where it's supposed to be rather, rather than just push it as, down as too much. That's the other aspect I want to touch upon is the fact that Analog and ProRes RAW as well as 8-bit, they all have their own personality and they all have something different to provide to you in a way where like it can accommodate to any kind of look you're after. So if you want something that's going to be very rich in blacks, I would highly recommend you shooting 8-bit and preferably perhaps in uh, N-Log because N-Log will create a very dark, dark black. 8-Bit has a softer approach to this and it does a real great uh, job to the point where you don't really need to color grade it. I mean, I've gone as flat as possible here in uh, camera and regardless, the colors are still quite uh, vibrant. I can just upload this as it is and it will look really good. Um, but I usually bring down the highlights a little bit because when I bring this into the computer, I can see how much this light here is affecting the look and the skins. So I just bring that a little bit down. So I mean, like I can also fix it right now if I want to by just bringing the f-stop to maybe a 2.8 rather than using 1.8. It's just to make sure that the shadow area has some details on it. That's the difference. And how to achieve that is that you need to make sure that your neutral gray card is sits on the histogram at 35 or between 35 and 40. So you need to click on the settings buttons on your Ninja 5. And here you'll go, you'll see your LUTs. I, ha I already have the analog LUT installed already. And your monitor right now is my monitor is on native. So you see the colors uh, as the camera is uh, putting them out. But you can actually put it to the LUT and that's what analog would look like right now natively from the camera. Your histogram right now is showing you what the camera actually sees and as you can tell the 
the shadows are not touching zero anywhere. They're all above zero, and I believe they're about 10. They're at 10%. This up here being 100%. 100% is the top line and the zero line. Then you got 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. So where's your, your gray card? Your gray card's right here. This little piece of cake right here that you see. If I go move it, you'll see it. It's going to move. And then that's how you know what portion is what. Mine, as you can tell right now, is falling right above 35. To be properly captured, it should probably be at f3.2 so I can see this a lot better. And that's how you capture this scene. You set it to be at 20, uh, 35% so that you can actually use it. And at 1.8, like it was before, this is what that looked like. Actually, this is it. That's 1.8. This is a big drastic change. It's probably blown up in some of the highlights. But as you can tell, even if I was to put it on the histogram, all the highlights are capped. You're nowhere reaching 100 because there's nothing true white in here except for maybe the highlights of the reflection of the frets, which perhaps are peaking, but there's no detail there regardless. So it's not a big deal. So this is what you got to do in RAW. You press the press the menu button on the camera and you have to go to HDMI settings in the, in the little wrench section right there and you go to advanced in advanced you go to raw X uh, output in a raw output you click it you click uh, raw output again and you enabled it by enabling it you now you can change uh, Put your set your settings as to what kind of format you want. So I'm gonna shoot FX, which is full frame and at 24 frames per second. And that's what we're gonna capture. So this is what happens in the ninja. As soon as you click OK or you get out of here, the ninja is gonna restart probably. But see, there's an information button right there. Press cancel to keep current codec selection, but we don't want that. We actually want to go into ProRes RAW, so we're gonna click OK. The Ninja 5 will restart and we can keep on capturing. So here, what we need to do first, is actually go into the settings just like we did before. And here we go to monitor. And right now it's set to native. We need to change that to HLG. In HLG, you'll get the high dynamic range that you're after, but let me show you what happens first. When you go to the histogram, you're, you're capping at 100. So it's like normal recording if you want to think about it. So this will show you exactly what's going on, but it will not give you true definition when it comes to your highlights. So that's the reason why you want to go back here to your settings and set your monitor to be HLG. In HLG, you'll get your, your signal to be a thousand right here in, the, in your histogram. And then you can actually capture it just properly. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna show you what the gray card looks like. It comes into play and you can see it move up and down. All right. So we're gonna increase the ISO by a tiny bit and we get, uh, I think right there, ISO 160, okay? In ISO 160, you get everything. You get the whole situation again, and you're not capping your highlights like you at all. This thing has no highlights for you to peak. Otherwise, they'll be way up here, up to a thousand. That's something that's peaking right there. That's a 250. So that's your the highest highlight. And I'm guessing from what I'm seeing, that's probably the that's probably this. That's probably this here. That's the best advice I could give you, just to make sure that your neutral gray is at 35 or thir in between 35 and 40. ProRes RAW is more like 8-bit and it's linear, so your colors are basically even in a line all the way from zero to the, the highest uh, number. You can never touch a zero on analog, but you'll be able to push your blacks low and very dark without a problem, but your uh, your um, your shadows will never touch zero. That's why it's a log because it's logarithmic and it starts flat 
and increases very fast to your highlights. And that's the reason why you see such a drastic approach into uh, blowing out stuff and everything and also pushing your darks very low without a problem. But just because you are not able to touch zero doesn't mean that you also maintain all the details in the darks. It just means that when you're uh, color grading, your darks will just look very dark. And if, if there's any details there, you'll see it. But if you lost it at the same time because um, you were exposing for your highlights and you did not really pay attention to the middle ground to see that whatever it is you're shooting is properly exposed, then yeah, you'll lose that too. So if you can preview what you can see on the computer with the LUT installed into the Ninja 5, just use it if you if you must know exactly what the computer will see and then like that would be like perhaps your best reference. I hope this tutorial is something that will help you a lot more and I'll just sign off by playing a little song and with some additional footage with it that I, I shot and see uh, if you perhaps can tell me what song it is. Mm -hmm.